By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome at another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I have another game of Unsleeved Revised for you. I've played a few games of Unsleeved Revised earlier, and if you'd like to see them, you can click on the link that's appearing right now. I'm playing against my brother, who's playing red and black, and I'm playing a mono black deck. And there I go, I'm playing a soul net turn one. So a soul net is an artifact that you can activate every time a creature goes to the graveyard, and you have to pay one and you can get a life. Oh, this is interesting, playing a dark ritual into a frozen shade, and an unholy strength on the frozen... Oh my goodness, he's playing a lightning bolt. My whole plan is ruined because I wanted to do some... to give my brother some early pressure. And I don't even have the mana left to activate my soul net, so I don't even get a life. And that's pretty horrible for me. Uh, let's see what else I can do. So I'm playing a drudge skeleton here. So 1-1 one, one regenerate. And he's playing a weakness. So it's minus 1, um, minus 2, minus 1. So that means my drudge skeleton dies. Luckily enough, I can activate my soul net, at least giving me one life. So I'm on 21. And it looked like my brother wanted to play a wall there. But instead, he's playing the Urk Raiders, a 2-3... Um, Reprint from the Arabian Nights and has to attack every turn. And he wants to attack, it looks like, but he doesn't do it. He's playing a Paralyze. Oh my goodness. That means my skeleton, Drudge Skeleton, gets tapped and I have to pay four in my upkeep, but I don't have four mana. And now I'm playing a Sorcerer's Queen. So after I've taken the two damage from the Urk Raiders, it looks like he's getting in for two again. And he's playing a Mons. Goblin Raiders. So we've got Urk Raiders and the Mons Goblin Raiders. And I'm still unable to untap. And I'm playing my own Paralyze. So that means that he has to untap it for four. Or if he doesn't, he'll actually have to take two damage. Because every turn that you don't attack with the Urk Raiders, you get two damage. So this is a pretty nice card to put a Paralyze on. And I'm turning it into a 0-2 of my Sorcerer's Queen, taking one damage from the Raiders, but, uh, the Mons Goblin Raiders. But this is quite interesting because he has to attack every turn. So that means, is he going to pay four during his upkeep this entire game? Or is he going to just take two damage every once in a while to play a bigger spell? So I'm not doing much at the moment. It's looking at my cards, not really being able to untap the Dredge Gout in passing turn. And here it seems that my brother is taking the two damage from the Urk Raiders, choosing not to untap. And this is what I just talked about. So now he's probably going to play out something. And it's a Rod of Ruin. And a Rod of Ruin is an artifact that you can tap to do one damage to any target. And that means that my Sorcerer's Queen is in danger. And he's attacking with his Mons Goblin Raider, giving me an opportunity to at least trade the two cards and gain a life from the Soul Net. So I'm going to 18, and my brother's also on 18 after getting that 2 damage from the Urk Raiders. And now I have 4 mana. It, it looks like it's a little bit, it's too little, too late. And remember that with that artifact that my brother has, he can just do 1 damage to my Dredge Skeleton, I will have to untap it again. But despite that, I'm choosing to untap my Dredge, not having a mana to regenerate. So I think this is a mistake. Because now he's using his Rod of Ruin, targeting my Drudge Skeleton, and it dies. So that's not very, very smart. Also getting the two damage. Or actually, not getting the two damage from the Urg Raiders, because he, he, he didn't untap it. Now I'm playing a Scaf Zombies that's a 2-2 vanilla creature. Attacking, taking the two damage from the Urg. Not really being able to create anything of a board state here, because my bro brother keeps wiping away my creatures. It's not looking very good for me. And that Rod of Ruin is just such a hassle. So he chooses to untap his Urg Raiders again, getting in for two more damage, bringing me down to 12. And passing turn. Here I go, playing an Unholy Strength. So that's plus two, plus one. So that means my Scav Zombies is now a 4-3 powerhouse. And let's see, I... Believe no, my brother needs an extra mana to activate a rod, rod of ruin. Oh, 
Oh, but he's playing a lightning bolt. And these lightning bolts are just killing me. This is the second time he's bolting a creature that has cards on it, has an unholy strength on it. And this match would be so different if my brother wouldn't have these lightning bolts. At least I, I get a life from the soul net, but I lose two life instantly. And what am I doing now? This is interesting. Play, playing a double dark ritual into a drain life. So I'm able to drain him for quite a lot of life. So he's now on nine and I'm actually on 18. And I'm playing another Urg Raiders, or actually not me, but my brother's playing another Urg Raiders, and I'm playing an Urg Raiders with an Unholy Strength on there. That's pretty good for me. That means I have 4-4 four, four Urg Raiders, and my brother is choosing not to untap, so that means he takes another 2 damage. So he'll go down to 7. And again, it's a Lightning Bolt in combination with the Rod of Ruin, dealing four damage. And I just I just keep losing life here. My brother has all the answers. What can I do? And you can see what a strong card Lightning Bolt is and also how handy Rod of Ruin is. I mean, have you seen that Rod of Ruin has gotten, what, three, four activations already? It's very useful in these matchups. Drawing a swamp, there's not much that I can do. He's untapping his entire army and attacking me with the Dwarven Warriors and two Urk Raiders. I'm down to four life. Don't think I'm going to win this one. And yeah, that's the game. And I had two fears and two Howl from Beyond. So that's not really going to save me. Let's see if I can do better in game number two. At least I'm on the play for the second game. And let's hope that my brother doesn't find as many lightning bolts as he did in that first game. So that's an interesting hand for him. Very aggressive. Two Urg Raiders, a Scaf Zombies, a Mountain, and enough Swamps. Three of them. And I'm starting here playing a Dark Ritual. That's a good start again. And I'm playing Urg Raiders. <laughs> and I haven't learned my lesson. I just keep playing aggressive. And uh, that means I've got a 4-4 four, four Earth Raiders turn 1. And that's not too bad. That's a pretty cool opening. You don't see that often. And he's not doing anything against it. So he, he doesn't have a Lightning Bolt. Chooses to play a Swamp. So I hit him for 4. And I'm playing another, another Earth Raider. So very aggressive here. And we've seen the hand of my brother. So he's probably also going to play an Earth Raiders. Um, and then he can choose to just block the... 2-3 or Chum block to 4-4. Four, four. He's probably going to block to 2-3. And he's taking 4 damage. So he's already down to 12. So I've now dealt him 8 damage. But it looks like I have a mana problem because I'm not able to play a third land. And there is a Hurlum Minotaur. That's a 2-3 vanilla creature. And 2-3 is good enough. So now my brother can double block. He's choosing not to attack with his Urk Raiders, so that means an extra 2 damage. I'm not sure if he's taking it. So, yeah, he is. He is right now. So he's on 10, and I'm just attacking him with everything. I found my uh, my third uh, Swamp, it looks like. He's probably going to double block my Urk Raider, or, as a matter of fact, he's probably going to double block my 4-4 four, four Urk Raider. And no, he chooses not to, because in this case, he can first kill my 2-3. Okay, he has to take 5 damage, but after that, he can kill my 4-4 four, four next turn. And of course it depends what you have on hand. I mean, 5 life, he's still in the game. He has to attack. Doesn't take the damage. I block with my second Trash Skeleton and regenerate. And there's the Scaf Zombie. So he will be able to make that important double block there. And I wonder what I'm going to do. I'm just going all out. I want to keep the pressure on the board. He's choosing to double block. I mean... Obviously the best option for him here. And I destroy the Hurlum Monitor. That means he keeps his Scaf Zombies. But I lose my 4-4 four, four Powerhouse. It looks like I'm playing my last card. So I'm all empty. With only two Drudge Skeletons on the board. And my brother down to three life. But is that going to be enough? Because it looks like he has control of the game. What I need now is a Drain Life. He's playing another Urk Raiders. And I'm taking my first damage. I'm down to 18. I'm tapping my drudges. It's not too bad. I, I can block with my drudge skeletons and simply wait until I draw into a drain life. 
So this is pretty exciting. Attacking here and blocking and regenerating. And he's playing a golem. That's a 4-6 artifact creature, and that's huge. I mean, that's one of those things that you just can't destroy in this format. Oh, and I play an unholy strength on my Drudge Skeleton, and that's actually pretty good, because now I have a 3-2 that I can regenerate, so that means that I have an Urk Raider killing machine right now, which is pretty good. It doesn't solve the golem problem, but I'm still on 18, my brother's on 3, and this is interesting, he's keeping the golem back, because he doesn't want to uh, get into the position that I can maybe overrun him and, and deal him that last 3 damage. So he chooses to play safe. And what can I do? Playing mana number five, one card in hand there. And, ooh, the screen is very dodgy, but it looks like my brother attacked with the Urk Raiders and it died. <laughs> my brother showing his card to the camera. It's a tunnel. That's an uncommon, and you can use that to um, to kill a wall. But I don't believe I do believe we play with walls. Actually, I'm not sure if there is a wall in um, in my deck. I don't think so. Maybe wall of bone. Oh, and there's a weakness on a drudge skeleton. So that's that's the perfect drudge skeleton killer, actually, because regeneration doesn't work on a weakness. Playing land number six, and I'm playing a conservator. Conservator, I believe, an uncommon, and you can tap it to prevent two damage. It's quite useless. And my brother is just working on his army, and his army is getting, um, is becoming more and more impressive. He's got a Hurlum Minotaur, a Golem, a Scape Zombies, and a Frozen Shade. And that Frozen Shade is a zero one. I always thought it had flying. Actually, when I was a kid, we used to, I, I, I believe we agreed that it has flying, because it looks like it's flying through the air, but it's actually not a flyer. And you can pay one black mana to give it plus one, plus one. So you can make that one a three, four, that Frozen Shade. And now he's playing a Goblin King. Okay, that's pretty cool. A nice rare there on the battlefield, and that gives all goblins plus one, plus one, and mountain walk. And we've seen someone's goblin raiders in this deck. So that means you now get a 2-2 two, two for one uh, red mana. That's a pretty good deal. And he's playing another mountain, and he's still alive. I mean, I'm on 18, but I'm just unable to kill him, waiting for my drain life. I think that's my, my line that I'm following now. Playing a raised dead. Yes, and I'm bringing back my Sorcerer's Queen. And that's pretty good, because the Sorcerer's Queen I can use to tap and make a creature 0-2. But there is a Lightning Bolt. And I'm pointing to my Conservator, but preventing 2 damage isn't enough when you get 3 damage from the Lightning Bolt. And he's playing a Paralyze on my Drudge Skeleton, so it looks like he's planning an attack now. This would be a, a great moment to do that with that tap Drudge on the board. He's playing with his, attacking with his Golem, attacking with his Goblin King, and attacking with his Frozen Shade? Yes, no, maybe? Oh, he's changing his attack now. He's only keeping his Golem on the defense, and he's attacking with all the other creatures. So this is Scap Zombies, a Goblin King, a Frozen Shade, and a Hurl of Minotaur coming my way like this whole army. And I decide to block the Frozen Shade and then use my Conservator to prevent two damage. So that means I'm going down to 14, so that's four damage dealt out of that Paralyze. And that's not too bad, but it's still looking good for me. All I need is that Drain Life. Instead, I'm drawing a Paralyzed 2, and I'm able to swing in there. And I, I got him! I got the game! I didn't even notice. Okay, so I'm playing that Paralyzed, and it's 
one. So that means we'll have to play a decisive game. Wow, those paralyzes are brutal. At least they can be. They tap your creature directly, and that gave me the possibility to get in there and uh, win this second game. So we're going to a third decisive game to see who wins this matchup. Game number three, and I think my brother has the advantage here. Oh, he has that tunnel again. That's not going to be very useful, but it looks like an okay hand there. Oh, not. He's... Okay, he's taking a mulligan. I, I couldn't see it that clear, clear, clearly, but I guess... Uh, sorry for that, but I guess... Um, knowing it's the decisive game here, he wants to have a really good hand. My hand is, is full of swamps, but at least I have an unholy strength, and I think I saw a napping imp there. So my brother's drawing a new hand, and he's allowed to scry one there. So he's got six in hand, drawing a swamp, uh, playing a swamp, turn one. And I'm playing a swamp as well. And he's playing an Urk Raiders. That's pretty good. We've seen a lot of Urk Raiders in these three games. I mean, this is Urk Raider number four, number five. I mean, those Urk Raiders get busy. And it's a problem because it's it's a three defense. It's not easy to take care of an Urk Raider. Um, tapping three mana for what? Oh, for my Natling Imp that we saw earlier. And Natling Imp is a 1-1 one, one creature. Beautiful art, beautiful art. And you can tap it to force a creature to attack. Well, it's not very useful when you have two Urk Raiders opposite to you because all the Urk Raiders want to do is attack. Even if it's lethal for themselves, they will probably still attack this very aggressive card from Arabian Nights. Um, so yeah, my Netling Imp has a little work to do, and I'm playing a Dark Ritual. This could be interesting. Tapping six mana, is there going to be a Drain Life? A Nightmare on the board! Oh, that's so cool. A Nightmare. So there's a 4-4 four, four Nightmare. Nightmare is a flying creature, and it has power and toughness equal to the Swamps, and it looks like I'm showing it off here. Uh, it's a beautiful card. I believe the art is done by Melissa Benson. And there's an attack. Oh no, this is so brutal. I'm losing my nightmare. This is brutal. So I'm blocking one of the Urk Raiders, and my brother's using a lightning bolt there to get rid. And I was playing a weakness. All my creatures are gone. Oh, this is a downer, because I'm going from this feeling of, you know, I'm getting back in the game here, playing that nightmare with the Dark Ritual too. All my creatures are gone, and I still have a pesky or greater to deal with. I'm on 14, my brother's still on 20, and remember, this is the decisive game, and you can see my brother has um, mana issues here. He's not drawing a lan lance. He's only got two lands here, but it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm still down to 12. Got a pretty empty hand there, and I think if my brother starts drawing mana as well, I'm just dead. But look at this, he finds him on Goblin Raiders 10, and I'm just not able to put anything on the board here. I mean, I need something big. I need, I need like a drain life. I need something interesting. Okay, at least at least I now have a 3-2 creature. Hopefully my brother doesn't have a way of, uh, of getting rid of this. A weakness would also uh, help in this case. But now I can kill the Urk Raiders. And can get rid of that. But my brother chooses to take two damage because he wants to attack next turn to maximize the damage. So I think that's a smart play because he, he was still on 20 anyway. Now he's on 18. It doesn't matter that much. And I'm deciding not to attack, obviously. Oh, and did you see that draw? Oh, no. That's a paralyze. Oh, my goodness. That means he can swing in for free. And now think back of that decision that was made earlier to take the two damage and not to attack with the Urg Raiders. That was a brilliant move. And now I have to untap. And it looks like that the the red black deck simply has more answers. If if I look back at all the games, then I think that's the biggest difference. It's a deck with more answers. And of course the dredge skeletons are great, but and look at this. A lightning bolt on my Dredge Skeleton. That means that I choose to regenerate it. And that means I'm tapped out. I have no defense. He's playing another, just a symbolic Paralyze. Wait, can I do something here? 
<laughs> I choose to to kill myself even more with the Howl from Beyond on my own Earth Raiders. In all honesty, it looks like that Howl from Beyond uh, might be a better fit for uh, my brother's red black deck. Oh man, this is this is a letdown. And I go down here. Uh, Yup wins this game uh, two to one with the red black revised unsleeved deck. Congratulations and. Thank you for uh, watching this episode of Timmy Talks. If you'd like to see more, you can click on the playlist that's appearing right now. Once again, thank you for watching Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And see you next time. Get us, get us, somebody,